Welcome to Real Mob Stories with James Proctor, coming up next. I have a special guest on from Joey Merlino's team that can answer the question, what's next? We have a great show today. My special guest and I will discuss what's been happening behind the scenes with the Skinny with Joey Merlino. We'll cover everything from what's happening between Joey Merlino and Kevin Conley to the DJ Vlad interview. What was up with the agreement that DJ Vlad would no longer bring on informants? We'll address that. And how did Joey's first live Q&A show go? We delve into all of those questions and more. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your insights in the comments. And now on to our feature presentation. All right, welcome everybody. I have Tommy Stiggs uh, from Tommy Stiggs Social Club with me today. So how are you doing today on this Palm Sunday? I'm good. How are you, James? Beautiful day. Yeah, beautiful day. Hey, thank you for coming on with me today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So we're going to talk about uh, Joey Merlino today. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot that he's been involved with and doing the last couple of months. And so, you know, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because uh, you're, you know, you're part of that team. You're, you're involved with, with Joey Merlino. And um, I just wanted to, you know, get your thoughts on a few things. So, okay. Okay. yeah. So, nice. you know, one of the things I, you know, obviously he's moved uh, to Patreon and, you know, he just uh, did the video with DJ Vlad and then uh, Joey had his first live show. And so you've been involved in all that. And so can you let everyone know your involvement with the show and what you're doing to help to, um, you know, build his brand? Sure, sure. So I help in the background. Uh, we, we speak quite a bit throughout the day. We, we talk about a couple of things, what to do. And uh, for the live shows. I think it's a good thing, in my opinion, that they do them, that they're done. Uh, it gets a good crowd in there. And if you put it to a business mind, it keeps people want wanting more. If you think about it, it really is a uh, it's desire. It gives you the desire to be there. It makes you want to be around it. Right. Now, it's not used to get people to Patreon, but understand that it will. And it has and it does get people over to the Patreon. So me, I monitor the chats. As you can see, I've been a wrench from the from the beginning of this. Yes. So I monitor the chats. I help in the YouTube studio a little bit. You know, should we slow the chat down? Do we monetize? You know, all the things that you all know that goes on with the show. I help in the background. Field some questions. We did do the Patreon live. I don't know if you did see that. I did. I, I saw okay. it once they put it on uh, YouTube. And so that was pretty nice. And Yeah, so we, did the, we did the Q&A. We were all on location together. We yeah. had the whole team there on location, and we did the Q and A. Oh, I never good. saw it after we did it, so I don't even know where it is. But we had a good <laughs> yeah. time, and, and that chat was flowing fast too. So. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. I heard that. Yeah, it was like uh, no one could keep up with it. It was just, it was just amazing to you know to see the numbers on there. It was just, it was just the first one. But how did you uh, actually? May I don't know if you can talk about, it, but how did you first meet Joey? Well, I Joey, I was introduced to by a dear personal friend to both of us a couple of years mm -hmm. ago and he was talking about doing the youtube thing you know going back and forth about it he didn't know what direction he was going in right and then you know fast forward a year goes by well he, he was thinking about this idea before last football season okay and i think it was too it was going to be a rush to execute to, right. get it, to get it done he was not going to be ready right. and then he fast forward he came him and snuff are friends forever uh, yeah. They know each other since, you know, Snuff's been, this is, Snuff is born, Joey knows him. So Wow, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he knows him since he's born. So they, they, they be the same yeah, and so, and now talking about a DJ <laughs> is a DJ Vlad. So, you know, it's interesting, you know, when, when we first heard that Joey was uh, going to be on this interview, uh, I had a lot of people that were critical of it uh, originally, you know, before they even heard it, you know, they were saying, Oh man, he's going to get jammed up and, yeah. and all that. And I kept on saying that there's no way he's going to get jammed up with DJ. I mean, you know, yeah, it's just a bad guy. up or even get any information that uh, could so did you have any concerns about joey being on vlad um 
what do you think of Vlad with, you know, he has this history of platforming informants. And so mm -hmm. what did you think about the interview? Did you see the, the, the interview that Joey did? I know I that you it. kind of mentioned it on your, I saw it all. I saw club. all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I saw all of it. Uh, I thought, I thought nothing negative from the moment he told me from the moment I knew it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I, we didn't even have to talk about it. He knows you can't trick him up. He knows exactly how to handle the situation. Remember, the guy's been interrogated and been on trial how many times? So yeah. a DJ is not going to really trip him up. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. Right. So I had no concerns whatsoever in my mind and none that I brought to his attention that I would even right. think. The way that it went is exactly how I thought it would go to the yeah. T. Yeah, I, I thought so too. And did you, uh, you know, it was interesting. It was a comment. I don't know if it was in jest or if it was actually a promise was that uh, – at one point in the interview, Joey said, hey, you know, you said you're not going to have any more raps on. And then um, DJ Blad said, well, I can't make that promise. And then Joey said, well, that's what your people said. Yeah. And so right. do you know what that was about? Or was that a joke? Or was it? Well, I'll tell you. So said? basically, the only conversation about this that I did have with him was that. Hmm. And he said, they, I, he said, I'm going on, but no more rats. And yeah. I'm going to I kind of I feel what you're saying. And that's what I think happened. I think his production team. Yeah, they just weren't him on. They weren't exactly. Joey on, and they're going to say That's, whatever. Yeah, and... yeah. I don't think Vlad said that, mm. which is kind of funny. They pulled a fast one. Now, that's Vlad's team that did that. But I think Joey did a great thing by actually bringing it up on yes. the interview, and I'm glad that Vlad kept it in the interview, too. So, I mean, that, was, that was good. But you got to remember, if he didn't keep it in the interview, he was going to get called out on one of, our, one of their shows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you guys <laughs> wouldn't have. Everybody knows he doesn't have a filter. Exactly. So if exactly. Vlad left that, mo that's one of the most important parts. If Vlad left that, that one sentence is the most important part of that whole hour long, however long it was, sit down or interview, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. That was the most important comment of the whole show. Amen. I agree, too. I mean, that's exactly what I thought. And, you know, I made a little short about it, but yeah. Um, you know, I, I thought, wow, you know, Vlad's going to, you know, he's either going to not uh, platform these rats or he's going to get called out on it. And, you know, I thought that was great that, that Joey uh, brought that up. And so we'll, well see. It's on Vlad's court now to see what he does. I think uh, you want my opinion. I think he's still going to continue to do what he does. Oh, I, I know it because he's just, you know, for him, he doesn't I don't think he has any care about informants he's yeah. never been affected by it but i know a lot of people in the in the hip-hop community they won't go on with with yeah. Vlad because of it so you but you could see a little bit as the as the interview i guess you could call it did go on he was getting critical of the rats he was yeah he he admitted he said you know how what i thought was Vlad. That, i mean Vlad. Vlad. yeah exactly i thought the best part of that's when he said uh, you know, I've had probably a hundred informants on, and they've all had an excuse uh, for yeah. why that they did what they did. And so he admitted it. So exactly. I thought that was good. So you know? that means he – now, he's got to be careful with that also as a businessman. Mm -hmm. Because if he talks really bad smack about them, <laughs> now he messes up his game with them. Yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a good point on it. And so – and he knows when he brings on – quote unquote guys that mob guys yeah. you know allegedly then you know they're going to get a lot of he's going to get a lot of views so yeah. that's why he does it yeah so i think he just does what he does i don't think he cares and i do think i don't i think that i think that he probably had the conversation with the team and not him personally. yeah yeah that's that's what i'm thinking too and so we'll go on to the yeah. so now on patreon um you know joey's been on there for a couple of months now and uh, so he's starting to do his lives. I think that's a great move, by the way, to to do the lives. That you know, that's a great way to connect with with your uh, with your subscribers, with your fans, for people that are interested. And in, you know, they had their first live uh, last week. It, it got published on YouTube. I I actually got to watch it. Um, I believe yesterday and oh. or Friday. And so okay. it was really good. So, uh, and I know you were there. And so. Uh, what was your thoughts on the on the live? I thought it was funny. I mean, it was a laugh fest for the for He's the great. whole hour. What He's great. So, yeah. So so the first one was Snuff alone. I don't know if you saw that. We did that during the week. It was only Snuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Snuff was on camera, and I was in the chat moderating, obviously. And then, right. And then he got figured out everything, and then Friday just decided to go live at two o'clock in the afternoon, and we just did it. And uh, I think it went great, to be honest yeah. with you. 
I think it went great, and he was being himself, which is good. Yeah. But he's always himself. Yeah. No matter where he is himself. And I think that's what is the draw. Mm -hmm. Not all the allegations. I think the draw is his personality more than anything else. It really well, he's is. unfiltered. You don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. And you don't know. To... And he doesn't care. He says what he feels yeah. and feels what he says. Yeah. And all the principles that he speaks about, he's he's uh, he's yeah. solid on them. And that's great. But he was trying to work the chat a little bit. Yeah. And he was he was in tune with the people that were in there, which is great. So there yep. is interaction. Yep. There is interaction. You know, the first one we did was on Patreon. I told you we did the first one on yep. Patreon. Mm -hmm. This is a little different. This is a little different. Uh, you had, I don't different. know, seven or 800 people in there or whatever. It was just crazy. The, I mean, you can't keep up with the chat. And I'm still learning a lot of this okay. stuff. I haven't done a live yeah. yet on my own. I, you know, I did it with Lee. But the, um, it's hard to keep up with the chats and, the, and everything. And, right. and my understanding, it was just, it was just flying. It was flying. No one could keep up with it nearly. Well, Right. Next time we're going to do it slower. We're going to do the chat slower. I didn't want to do that this time. I wanted mm -hmm. people to feel free and just come in and come in and I can handle it. I thought yeah. I did a pretty good, do a pretty good job. Handling right. It. Right. Yeah. So I wanted it to be natural the first time. I know he was going nuts. He was trying to read everything. <laughs> it was crazy. He was yeah. going nuts trying to read everything. I didn't tell him we were going to go that fast. I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I mean, it, that I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it in in the real, real, you know, a yeah, real one. The real, real, t real. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then the now we'll tell everybody next time. Uh, you know, when they're for, when they open up the next show, they'll yeah. say, okay, the chat's going to be a little bit slower. We got, you know, working on things. <laughs> So how's Patreon going? Is you know, there's there's two Patreon shows that I know that are doing well. I know Mikey Scars, no excuses. They get a lot of people and you know, they they do a lot of history and stuff too. I think that's that's pretty good, regardless of how you you know, a person feels about him cooperating. You know, they do I think some good content. But um um, as far as Joey goes, or have you saw an uptick in number of? I mean, you don't even have any um, knowledge of the business side of it, but are they make? Are, they've got a pretty good following, yeah. right, on Patreon. It's growing nicely. It started off really nicely. Yeah, it's not. It's not going backwards. I could tell you that it's oh, not going great. backwards. It's still. It's still there, and mm -hmm. there are some. There's some good stuff in there. That's not going to be on the regular YouTube. That's that's good, and I think it's smart that. What what it seems like you guys are doing is whenever the show, maybe, I don't know, a few days later or whatever, you'll put clips or whatever of, of the show on from Patreon because I think that helps to get people interested. You know, it gives them a taste, I guess, of what uh, what's on Patreon, and so that will encourage people to that's right. You know, actually subscribe. And so I thought that was uh, right. a, a, right. a genius move. I know Mikey Scar, they do that as, as well. And so, well, let me, let me add to that. So yeah. here's what happens. The edited version for YouTube and the mm -hmm. Patreon hit at the same time. Oh, okay. Right. So when, when they say go over to Patreon, you're finishing watching that YouTube segment. Mm -hmm. yep. Let's just say the show's an hour. I'm just using it. Right, right, right. And you got a half hour on the YouTube and the other half hour is in the Patreon platform. Yeah. So you're going to go right over to the Patreon because you want to see what you missed. Mm, and you okay. can pick up at that half hour mark and catch that other half hour, which is very interesting, by the way. Yeah. There's yeah. wiretaps on there. Mm -hmm. There's actual court stuff on there wow. on the Patreon. You're going to hear people's voices. Mm. We had last week we had what, true wiretaps on there. That's cool. From prisons mm -hmm. to the outside wow. world, talking smack and all of this stuff. So this is all admissible because, you know, you get this when you have a discovery, if you're indicted. In yeah, case. exactly. Yeah. So that's, it's very interesting. The Patreon aspect is very interesting. Yeah. It takes it to another level. Right. And, the, and you, it's just stuff you can't put on, on YouTube. And so um, how many shows, what's kind of the schedule uh, for Joey's show? So for people that want to join Patreon and see that, how many shows are they doing a week? And, and kind of what's that? Um, right, right now it's one show a week. It's every Thursday, one p.m. Jersey time. So you okay, have to, you have to, you know, figure that out wherever you live at. But Jersey right, time, right. It's, mm -hmm. it's one p.m. every Thursday. Okay, and one p.m. every Thursday, the YouTube clip hits, and it's a pretty good amount. You get a good oh, amount yeah. on the regular YouTube. It's not oh, they're yeah. not skimp they're not skimping. Believe me, they're not skimping. They're really no, giving it, you it's something. like twenty yeah. thirty minutes. I mean, that's, yeah, I think that's really good. And then. Uh, how often will you guys be doing the lives? What's kind of the plan on that? We're going to see. I, 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 it's not determined yet. Yeah. 
it's not determined yet, so we'll see. Uh, um, no, at that's least fair. Probably once a week, hopefully. I would like to see yeah. him do it once a week. You don't no, want to do too much, obviously. You don't want to get the saturation. Yeah, that's always the that's always the um, the challenge, right? You, you so, want to give people enough, but not too much. What I would like, in my personal opinion, and it hasn't really been discussed in 100%, and they're going to make the ultimate decision, and yeah, they're going to say to me, we made the decision, you know, we're going, <laughs> it's going to be no. It's up right. to the, they have a schedule they have to go by. You know, they're, they're right. all over the place, so. Exactly. I'm around. I'm around all the time, and I could be down here in an hour, and mm-hmm. or remotely. Everything's remote now. I right. Work, work the show, but the uh, I think, on my personal opinion, I think Friday afternoons is really good. Yeah. Or Wednesday. So pre Patreon mm-hmm. release or post Patreon release, we got to see. That gotta makes see. a lot of sense. You know, a lot of you know what Mikey Scar, what they do, which is interesting. They they do a show. I don't know. Um, Friday, maybe something. I don't know, but they do a recorded show. But then on the weekend, they do a, a Q and A afterwards. And so I think one of the things, uh, Tommy, is that if it, let's say he does a post live, you know, post live show, uh, that might be good because you got the questions from the previous show, right? Right. And so yes, you know, it's well, obviously up to them. But I rather, I rather it be post. Yeah. Pre, you can do. We can do a pre with snuff, like we yeah. did this week. I think Wednesday we did snuff alone. Yes, that's right. And it was coming out Thursday, mm-hmm. and then Friday snuff and Joey. Yeah, worked yeah, out thought, good. Oh, I thought it worked out. Uh, worked great, out well, you know. So it worked out good. It was it was good. It worked out well. Yeah, so, one. Of the, yeah, thanks for that. You know, I was just curious, but you know, one of the things, just one point in the the live, I wanted to mention is that you know I'd heard the rumors last week. Uh, couple of people saying that Kevin Connolly was no longer involved with the skinny of Joey Merlino. I didn't want to go with that until I knew if that was true or not. And we did hear from, from Joey on the live that uh, they're no longer together. Um, you know, but it sounds like it was, uh, you know, they're still friends. It wasn't, you know, maybe it's just more creative direction than anything, but what do you think about the change? And do you think that'll affect the podcast moving forward? I don't think it'll change anything whatsoever. They're still dear friends. They could probably talk every day. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think anything. I think it's a Hollywood, Philadelphia disconnect. Time yeah. changes and mm-hmm. the ability to get together. Uh, it's just right. things like that, but nothing negative whatsoever. The way it was presented by people is that, oh, it was a big shakeup. No, it's none of that. There was yeah. none of that breaking news. This is a shakeup. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> shattering. No, it was none of that. They're dear yeah. friends. They're dear friends. And there is no issues there. You, you know, Kevin Conley does his own stuff also. Right? Yeah. Like that. So he has his own stuff going on also. Yeah, that was my thought too, was that I didn't want to just um, go into the rumor mill and something no. without without being for sure on it. It just, you know, I heard about it and, you know, I thought, well, you know, this happens all the time. That's not necessarily a, a big story. But, right. um, but then you started getting these these folks that, wanted to create drama and say, oh, well, they had some sort of blow up, which, you know, obviously didn't happen. You want to get so. the spotlight on them. Uh, I get it. It's a business, right? I understand. It's yeah. a business, but but it was yeah. too far off. You got to know your yeah. facts before you get into it. Yeah, and I think stuff. Joey, and that, that's another thing. I think, you know, he, he addressed it. He addressed it towards the beginning. So I thought that was a, a smart move as well, you know, yeah. not let things linger. But what do you think? He's a great kid. He's a great yeah. kid. He's great to talk with. He's good to communicate yeah. with. You know, we had a four-way chat going through the beginning yeah. of all of this, and everybody spoke right. right. And well, okay, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're going to right. blah, 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 all the all the things going back and forth. Never an issue. I never saw any bad conversations. Never a criticism. Right. They weren't obligated to Kevin. No. Kevin wasn't obligated to them. They were right. just doing it together. Yeah. And now they're on their own, and it seems to be good for everybody. Yeah. So there's no, Joey, there was no, there's no drama. There's no drama or bad blood. Just right. That's basically sums it up. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that that makes sense too. A lot of times when you'll start off in a in an arrangement, a business arrangement or whatever, to get something off the ground, and then once that um, that brand matures a little bit, then you know that's not needed, or you know you you go other directions. And so I thought that you know definitely made sense. And so. You know, I'm glad they brought it up. But what do you think's next for Joey? Uh, one of the things, this is just my opinion, you know, and I'm basing this on interviews that I, I heard him with um, George Anastasia 
you know, didn't hear the actual interviews. I just knew what George Anastasia from the Philly Inquirer put down on um, in his newspaper articles about his interaction with Joey. And so he was saying that, and this was 10 years ago, Joey was looking for a maybe a future book or movie deal. Uh, you know, I know that one of the things that Hollywood looks for, and also even like with book publishers now, they want to see the this huge social media presence. And obviously Joey's getting that. Do you, what do you think's his future? Do you think that um, he's looking for a story on his life to go, come out? Or what are your thoughts? I don't think so. I really honestly don't think so. And I could be wrong. We didn't really have the conversation, but I don't think so. I don't think yeah. so. And I'll jump into, uh, let me jump into another aspect of this. Because yeah. what's the, what's the life story? Remember what he's not. Mm-hmm. Remember what he's not convicted of. Right. Remember what he's not admitted to. And that yeah. is being what they allege him to be. And that is a mafia boss. Right. Exactly. He's never been convicted of that. And he's never admitted to that. Right. He's been convicted so where's of the story then? Yeah. Right. So what, where's the story? So, interesting. <laughs> right. So it wouldn't be his story. Hollywood can do it. Hollywood can do whatever Hollywood wants to do, right? Right. They made the first Gotti movie. They didn't check what they just made the movie. Yeah. Based on what? News report and all of that. You know, based on yeah, court yeah. documents, right. all that right. stuff. And, yeah. and it works. And they're probably mm-hmm. all kidding me. Oh, no seriousness. There is a good good movie story there, obviously. There's yeah. a good movie story there. But um no, no talk about it at all. Right. Okay. Not and that, that I think that makes sense. And he's he's changed a little bit, I think, in the last ten years, because he, he was he seemed open with Anastasia, but what I notice now is when any of these people start talking about the life or you're a real mob boss, he shuts down. He, he, I think it's because he has been, re, he has been set up so many times by these informants and he's, he just shuts down when people start asking stuff about the lie, you know? Yeah. Because like I said, he's been convicted of specific crimes. Yep. They didn't convict him as a, you know, they allege it, but he's not convicted as being a mafia boss. No, no, that's not. So, true. yeah, he shuts it down. But I don't think he's changed as far as he used to answer the press when he was walking into court. I don't think any of that has changed. Right. Because right. they don't approach him anymore. But I don't think that has changed. His personality, as we see on the podcast, is the same way he would address a, a, a reporter in the street. Yeah. No, that that's true. He's consistent. He's consistent in the way he... Yeah. Forever. No, that, that makes sense. Um, so... Well, I guess what I wanted to kind of close up, close out with was, you know, I'm I'm really impressed with. So you have a YouTube channel, you have Tommy Stig's Social Club, and today you have a show. You pretty much have a show. Is it every day or is it five days a week plus one weekend show? What how? Do, what's your schedule? Pretty much seven days, seven a.m. coffee. Mm-hmm. Everybody's having coffee at seven. Not every, you know, a lot of people are having coffee at seven o'clock in the morning. It's actually a coffee break, and we just general general chat. And then in the night during the week, I do a night show, seven p.m. every night. I have a wine down. I call it yeah. wine, but I have a glass of wine because I'm Italian, and I have a glass yeah. of wine every night. I have a glass of wine every night since I did for forty years. <laughs> yeah. So now I say, well, have a glass of wine with me. Drinks around the house. Come in. Let's have a chat. And I really yeah, I think, typically uh, start off with no topic, James. Nothing. Really? Wow. <laughs> That's really cool. And and I get know, I, I probably get around, you know, sometimes I'll get up to 40 people in the morning having coffee with me. Yeah. Sometimes I 60, think that's cool. Yeah, sometimes 60, 70 at night if yeah. I get, if I don't have somebody on. Now, I've had Snuff on a couple times. I've had Angelo Lutz on. You know, yeah. I've had people on. That Then, of course, you get a jump yeah, on Yeah, you that. get more people, yeah. yeah. But other than that, I just keep it very general. Something that people can relate to everyday stuff. No drama. Let me tell you yeah. what I did notice in the shows, which is great. Mm-hmm. I do notice people coming into the chat that are from, some are from a drama genre. Yep. Or them, whatever they want to call these genres. Mm-hmm. And yeah. they actually go toe to toe in some of those chats. Now, when they come into the social club chat, they act totally different. That's great. They don't argue in there. Yeah, that's what I was impressed with, and that's what I saw was uh, was the positivity. And you know, I encourage everyone to, you know, check it out. I, I think you're doing a, a great job, and and it it reminds me of just like if if you were in the neighborhood and you're just going to an actual coffee shop, you're sitting down BSing, just shooting the breeze. That's yeah. what it seems to me. And so, you know, I, I think you've got a, you know, it's not too formal. It's not. Um, you know, Played but back. it's 
yeah, it's, it's true. Like that. I grew up in social clubs. I mean, my grandfather had a social club. Mm-hmm. I was in social clubs. I, you know, I dabbled in that stuff a little bit. So I was involved. That's what I grew up around social clubs, card games. And this is what yeah. I know. So when I put up the channel, I said, what the hell? Everybody's coming in to hang out. And it reminds me of me being in the social club. So you know what? Let me just call it. Let me call it Dominic's Dig Social Club. And it seems to be picking up pretty good. I mean, for a yeah. channel about nothing, I'm doing pretty good. I got over 3,600 subscribers. I got a million mm-hmm. views this week. Great. I hit a million views on a channel about nothing. So really, really, like you said, though, it's a, it, you feel like you're in, in a, you feel like you're in a, like a, a chill spot, a social club. Yeah. 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 I, so I that's what that I wanted cool. to do because that's what I grew up around seeing all guys hanging around in a social club talking about everything. Nah, I thought that was, I thought <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and it works. Yeah, it, it does. Two things on the, on today's show that I thought was interesting. Or I didn't know your mom was such a great, um, uh, Card poker. player, poker player, yeah. Old poker. Wow. What is that? Seven cards they used to play. Yeah, seven, seven cards. Good. Wow. Very good. Yeah, she's an excellent poker player. She, she was in tournaments all over the country. She, she's, she's gonna be, and she's, she's gonna be on Skinny Show. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah, what I heard. Point. I thought that was yep. pretty cool. So definitely need to uh, tune in to your mom when she's. Yeah, on. that's gonna be. It, great. It, is it going to be next week? No, we don't know yet. We just spoke about yeah, it. we just spoke about it last week because we were on my show. We were talking yeah. about poker, and I called my mother when I was live, mm-hmm. and she started talking about I know how to count cards and read cards, and we were cracking up. We were laughing so, so I mentioned it. We, me and Joey were talking about it, and he's like, "That's a great idea. Let's do it." So we're going to do it. So she'll go on. No, she'll I think that I think it's cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You know, it should be it, fun. My mother's almost eighty years old, and she's going to talk oh, wow. poker with Joey. Wow. It's going to be good. It should be no, fun. That's- that's really that's really cool. Because so. my mother used to, my mother did host card games in our house. We had a our basement was basically a, like seven car seven tables, and yeah. my mother would host the card games when she wasn't playing. Oh, okay, I see what so you're she saying. would host, and then I would she would she would cook all kinds of food, and I would serve the guys. Yeah, and game oh. and gals. There was men and women playing poker, and they would give me tips as I served them my mother's sandwiches. <laughs> It's How crazy. old were you when you started? Doing Probably nine, that? ten years old, maybe. Or, oh yeah. wow, young, young. Because it would be a Friday night they start, and they sometimes they play till Sunday. Mm. Poker games could go. For days. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. How many so, people would show up to those? I'd uh, say she days? had seven tables, maybe thirty-five people, forty people down there. Yeah, and one thing you said though, even though she's so good at playing poker, when she would host the tournament, she didn't play in those tournaments. Right. So I mean, our, our games. I'm sorry. She, what a tournament. Right. For not a tournament, but games. Yeah, she did yeah. not play. In fact, a few, there was about four or five houses in the neighborhood that hosted the games. Yeah. And then when that certain individual hosted the game, they did not play. They they just provided, the, you know, the food and all that stuff. So they yeah. would get a little money from the, from each the pot. house. Yeah. From yeah. each pot, each hand. No, that's cool. That's really Great cool. Stuff, okay. Uh, well, I could just tell you, because in Italian culture, it is a big thing. Yeah, you it's see how social. It's, it's a social thing. social thing. It is a social yeah. thing. Every Sunday after we're all done having dinner, there's playing cards. It's always okay. something going on. Playing cards. Now there's all different new games that they have yeah. that the kids play now. But it's mm-hmm. it's part of the culture. Like tonight's Palm Sunday. After dinner tonight, we're going to be playing a game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that story. was that's a normal thing. It would always be Sunday night. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah, what's your plans for the rest of this year with your channel? And and I know you'll be dealing with Joey yeah. uh, with the show. Is you got any big plans for the rest of the year? I quite honestly, I, I don't know. I just doing exactly what I'm doing. Somebody yeah. reached out to me. There's people that reach out to me now because I guess they see this channel out there in yeah. the algorithm. Yeah, something. yeah. And they're talking about uh, search engine optimization and all of that stuff. <laughs> I don't know anything about this stuff, James. I really don't. I just know how to push live and talk. That's it. Yeah. Well, so I'm going to continue great, doing yeah. what I'm doing and enjoying yeah. the ride. That's all. No, that that's really good. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we close the? No, show? I'm just enjoying this. Uh, just enjoying the ride with them. I yeah. think they can they can go for a long time. Yeah. I think they can really go for a long time. And they're what, what they come up with each week is totally up to them. They are the vibe. Yeah. Everybody else is in the background. I don't know if you saw Ralph. He was in that one the other mm-hmm. day, and Al was in the one the other day. Yeah. Well, it's you're just getting a real down to earth vibe. Now, when they do the filming at the Patreon for the Patreon, that's in the studio and it's right. really professional. It's mu- it's done much different. As you can see, the quality is incredible. Oh yeah, it is. I mean, the studio that they use is amazing. Right. So for me, I'll just go with that vibe, hang out with them, do what they do, 
enjoy that. Go down there once in a while and hang out and do it on location. Yeah. And otherwise, just continue doing exactly what I'm doing. And that's basically it. I came into this through a disastrous genre, as you know. Yeah. Right? I came into this through like a drama genre. Mm-hmm. And I said, this ain't, this isn't for me. I, that's, that's not for me. I'm going to go yeah. my... I'm, I'm, and I think it might have been Angel. Angel? A couple yeah. of people said to me, Tom Levecchia, they said, mm-hmm. Sid, just push live. Try it. Mm-hmm. So I said, to do what? <laughs> I don't want to do it. Just give it a shot. I think you could do it. And then I did it. And now uh, here we are, two years later. And You're doing great. Right so they gave yeah. me the push on it. And they, these people that have seen me on shows before I launched the show. Right. Said, you can you can do this on your own. So, okay, yeah. Try it out and do it. So there well, we are. That, yep. Thank you so much. And yeah. everyone, please uh, go to the Tommy Stig Social Club. We'll, we'll put the, the link down for you. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, come join him for coffee on, yeah. um, every morning at every 7 a.m. Eastern. So wow. I appreciate you coming on. You know, Pleasure. thank you so much. And, and God thank bless you, you Tommy. Okay? You too. God bless All you. Right. You take care. Okay. Take care. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for watching the show with my special guest, Tommy Stiggs. Let me know what you thought about the discussion in the comments below. Please take care, stay safe, and God bless you always.